This is easily the coolest free plugin for After Effects. Crates Black Hole lets you create these interstellar inspired black holes and change the mass of the black hole, the color, the speed, the scale, and it even has built in 3D volumetric fog that casts shadows on the accretion disk, which is just something you don't expect to see in After Effects. The plugin is incredibly custom but we do provide a bunch of different presets to get you started with these really beautiful different configurations of the parameters. To install the plugin, use the link in the description to sign up for a free Production Crate account. Then download Portal and use this to install the LaForge suite, which is our collection of awesome plugins. It's very easy to set up the black hole. You just have to set your project's color engine to OCIO Color Managed, and then the bit depth to 32. This will help the glow look real. Now let's create a new composition. I'll create a new layer and then just go to Effect, Production Crate 3D and then Crates Black Hole. And already it's looking like we can see the black hole. Now let's add a 3D camera and set it to a two node camera. This allows you to set the point of interest to the center of the world so that when you orbit around the black hole, it stays in the center. It's a really handy thing. Now the main ingredient to a good black hole is the glow. So add a new adjustment layer and then add your favorite glow effect. I recommend using Crate's Easy Glow. All you have to do is enable a linear workflow and from there you just change the intensity, change the saturation, anything you want to change, it's so easy. If for example you compare that to the built-in glow that After Effects provides, you can see that it's a very difficult to manage glow. The best way to do it is by setting the radius to 2, setting intensity to 0.1, duplicating, setting the new radius to 8, duplicate again, setting the new radius to 30, then again set it to 90, then again set it to 300, and one more time 900. Now collapse this and add an exposure effect, and additionally set the mode to add mode. So now you can control the brightness and the contrast of your glow. But for now, I will be using Crate's Easy Glow. Let's add some dirt to the lens by going to Graphics Crate and searching for Lens. I recommend downloading Dirty Lens Texture 9. You can download a low resolution version for free. If you use Portal, it downloads directly to an organized folder. And the best part is that you can just drag and drop it into your project. So convenient, I love it. I'll scale it down to a more manageable size. And then I'm going to set the track mat of the glow adjustment layer to the Dirty Lens Texture. Make sure you set it to a Luma mat. And once again, make sure you're set setting the blend mode of the glow to an add. And look what that does to our camera lens. It creates this dirty scratched effect. You can change the contrast by adding a curves effect to the dirty lens texture and just drag the points around until it provides a contrast that you're happy with. Let's make it even more colorful by adding a new adjustment layer and adding a curves effect. What I like to do is go to each color channel and very gently change the trajectory of each curve so that we're introducing these imperfections similar to the way that color degrades when you're filming on a physical medium. You can kind of see it in Interstellar as well. This is already looking fantastic. You can even apply one of our free plugins, which is Chromatic Aberration, to introduce a bit more realism in your lens. It's really beautiful. To tilt the black hole, we actually tilt the camera. So click on the camera, press R, and adjust the Z rotation. Finally, when you're happy with the position of everything, you can go back to the black hole plugin and enable the high quality mode. And you can see that this gets rid of all of these noisy areas in the highly distorted clouds. If you need to make it even more high quality, go to the rendering dropdown and set render quality to a much higher value. Isn't that just beautiful? I just love it so much. You can control the structure of your black hole in the shape parameters. For example, the mass controls how much of the light is bent around the black hole, and the opacity controls how thick and dense the smoke is surrounding the black hole. The opacity falloff is great at making the smoke really 
thin as you get further away, but really dense as you get closer to the center. You can change the thickness of your disc by changing the inner radius and the outer radius. The disc thickness parameter allows you to make the smoke of the black hole physically thicker, which creates this really nice foggy and volumetric cloud surrounding the black hole. If you have any artifacts in the smoke, you may have to increase the render quality, but you can leave this until when you're ready to render. The thickness falloff allows you to make the outer part thinner, whereas the inside area is thicker. We have a very simple scale parameter, as well as a light pass-through parameter, which controls how easily light can penetrate the smoke. By setting it to a low value like zero, you get very efficient and easy to render shadows. The next group is shading, and here you can control the gradient of your accretion disk from the inside to the outside. So for example, I'm gonna set it to a rainbow quickly. Gradient bias allows you to shift these earlier colors much closer to the center of the black hole, which is really handy because if you want a very specific color just touching the edge of the event horizon, this is the perfect way to do it. Additionally, gradient offset allows you to shift this gradient that you've created further outwards or further in. So if you set your black hole mass to a high value, but you still want those edge colors, increasing the gradient offset allows you to push the gradient back onto the edge of the event horizon. The brightness slope allows you to darken the colors further on the outside exponentially so that the interior looks incredibly hot and glows incredibly brightly. This can also be achieved by increasing the inner boost, which only increases the brightness of the the first color in your gradient. I used it here in particular where I wanted the center ring to be extremely bright with a nice cool tone. One of the best parameters is the absorption color, which allows you to define which color is absorbed by the dust as it travels through it. We even have the red shifting, which is very similar to the Doppler effect, where the disk is rotating so quickly that the wavelength of light actually changes its brightness and its hue. In the noise dropdown, you can control the scale of the clouds in your accretion disk, as well as the detail with the octaves and the roughness of your clouds. Now, if we take a minute to look from above and press play, you can kind of see that the inside looks like it's spinning quicker than the outside and that's intentional. You can increase the inside speed, but then when you press play, it suddenly looks kind of odd, and that's because we're using noise layers. Essentially, the more noise layers you have, the smoother the transition in the velocity gradient. So if I set it to six, for example, then here you get this really smooth swirling whirlpool effect. It's quite addictive. The noise layer scaling allows you to compress or stretch these outer layers. The shadow settings here are fantastic. You first enable them by clicking on the checkbox up here, but you can already see the amount of detail that they add to the smoke. They really bring out the contrast. From here, you can change the shadow strength, the length, which is basically how far a shadow reaches, the softness of the shadow, how many steps to take, which you can kind of see here, the way it grows step by step, the higher the number, the longer the shadow, but the longer to calculate, and then the shadow octaves. This basically uses the same noise function as the density, but at a different octave count. The shadow center proximity allows you to add more shadows nearer the center, but by setting it to a lower value, it looks like the inside is only glowing with light instead of receiving a shadow. The final group is the render settings and it's got a bunch of strange sounding parameters. The important thing to know is that this plugin uses ray marching. Ray marching is when rays of light are shot out into the scene and then we progressively calculate the accumulated values of the gravitational pull over a step-by-step -step iterative process. The smaller the step, the more accurate the calculation. So for example, you can set the initial step step size to a higher value, and you can see the steps appearing here. So one step, two step, three step, four step. 
So the lower the initial size, the higher the quality. But I simply recommend adjusting render quality. If you find yourself encountering dark areas, especially when you're near the accretion disk, increase the maximum disk multiplier. This will increase the number of steps that a ray of light can take, allowing you to penetrate further into the scene. If you make anything awesome with this plugin, tag us or join our Discord in the link below to share it with us. I would love to see it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon.